Hi, welcome or welcome back. My name is Carson and this is my podcast where I talk about all things knitting related, mostly just rambling, but today I'll be showing you some of my whips, um, my finished objects. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So today I have a few finished objects to share with you. They're kind of small, but they're also really cute. Um, and I have some whips I've been casting on like crazy, which uh, I don't know why. <laughs> so I have a few whips, I have some acquisitions, so it should be pretty good. Um, it's kind of storming outside, maybe fixing to, so you might hear some fun rain or rumbling of thunder. Maybe that'll like set the tone for a nice fun you know, just like day in of knitting. So yeah, let's just, uh, I'll guess I'll just talk about my first finished object. So these are so cute. I finished a pair of socks. I repeat a pair, two socks. Um, so yeah, these are the perfect newborn socks. They, there was a free pattern on Ravelry. I say was because I was just informed it used to be free, um, but I guess they took it off, and someone told me that on the last podcast I did. So I was kind of sad. I must have snatched it up like right before they took it off, because I haven't had this pattern for very long. Um, but I don't know if you can find it anywhere else. I mean, I'm sure there are other like newborn tiny sock patterns out there. I don't know about free, but yeah. So kind of a bummer that they're not on Ravelry anymore, but maybe y'all know somewhere else to find them. If you do, let me know. Um, yeah, they're just little ribbed socks. I kind of talked about these. They were a whip before, but now I finished two of them. So, you know, they're a complete pair. But yeah, they're just ribbed. There's a pat. There's an option in the pattern to do cable socks, which are also really cute. And I kind of want to do those too. But I really like how these look rolled up. They're just so little. And I kind of wonder, <laughs> these look like big feet. They're called perfect newborn socks. And so they're supposed to be for newborns. Obviously, I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm, um, if you don't know, I am expecting a child <laughs> in December. So these are for my unborn child, um, to keep his feet extra warm in the super hot, you know, summer or winter months of Texas. You never know, it could get hot and we could just like crank the AC up really high. Um, <laughs> so he can enjoy all of his knits because he has got quite a few knits. So yeah, he'll be joining us around Christmas time. So, you know, there's a chance it could be cold. It could be cold. I'm starting a prayer circle with all. I'm gonna, if anyone wants to join, <laughs> you can. If all of our fellow Texas knitters were like, okay, we gotta pray for some like cold weather so we can, you know, show off all of our knitted items. But yeah, so these are super easy. Um, if you have never done socks before and if you want to try, even if you don't have like a newborn in your life or someone to even gift knit for, I recommend just, trying these out for fun because you learn every single thing about socks in like a very tiny short um just like a condensed way you don't have to do as much if you're not doing like a big adult sock there's obviously not as much to knit so you kind of get done with steps faster so you learn how to do like the leg and you know the heel turn the gusset um in step whatever so it's really nice and i think too if you didn't have a newborn in your life and you wanted to knit some of these socks just to kind of either for fun or just to learn how to do a sock you could definitely knit a ton of these and do like a cute little garland for christmas or something i see a bunch of people do stockings and it kind of looks like a stocking so you could do that hang them on like you know a string and clip them that's one idea i have but so yeah i highly recommend um <laughs> if you can find the pattern I don't know. I'll update you if I... I'll put it in the description if I can find a similar pattern or something. So yeah, bummer these aren't available. They aren't even... I think they just took them off. They're not even available to like buy. I don't know why, but... So that's a bummer. But if you have the pattern, if you caught it before it went away, you should just go ahead and knit them. <laughs> So yeah, oh and the yarn I use for this is called Tenderfoot. Um, I think it's like a lamb's wool nylon blend and so it is a little bit more rustic. I did block them. I mean, I don't have tiny blockers. That'd be so cute if I had like teeny tiny sock blockers. I just, you know, blocked them on a mat and laid them out. I soaked them just to kind of like soften them up because I wasn't sure. They were kind of rough to knit with just because I think it's lamb's wool, which does wool come for lambs anyways? 
I don't know. I mean, it wasn't like merino wool, it's lamb's wool, so it just feels more rustic. But they'll definitely hold up. I mean, not that he'll be walking in these. <laughs> it's not like he's gonna walk a million miles. He can't even walk. But, um, so yeah, I did like this yarn. I have a bunch of this yarn, actually. I got it from my local yarn store when I lived in Washington. We just moved back to Texas a few months ago. Um, but I did snag a ton of yarn. I think I was just stocking up on yarn before we left, because I was like, I don't even know if there's a yarn store in Texas. <laughs> there are. There, it just depends on your location. There's one here in my town, actually. So that's been super nice. But I definitely stocked up on a lot of yarn, just like one or two skeins of sock yarn here and there. I just have a variety. So I have a ton of um, Tenderfoot just in different colors. So I think they'll make pretty cool like color work socks too with all the extras I have left. Cause I mean, I use nothing for this. Oh, this is a great stash busting project too. Okay, anyways, I'll stop talking about my cute little socks. I think I'm proud of them because I knit two. I never knit two socks. So, so my next uh, finished object is also very cute. I'm so excited for this one. <gasps> look at it. Look at it. It's a tiny little bear hat. It looks like a bear. It has bear ears. And I guess I can show you. I'll show you. If you follow me on Instagram or if you've like watched any of my other, what, two, three videos, um, I've probably shown this before. You might have seen this. But this is the Teddy Bear Sweater by Petite Knit. So I was like, you know what? We have to finish the outfit. We have to complete it. So I found this little guy and it is called, let's see, it's called Ollie's Bear Hat by Hannah Graham. So yeah, I found her on Instagram uh, just like randomly and I loved all of her stuff. She has a ton of really cute baby children's patterns. She also has a YouTube and I've been watching her YouTube like crazy. I think she just started a podcast, so that's been really fun to watch her. But yeah, so this is very cute. It's kind of, maybe I'll show you in the light by the light wall so you can see it. <laughs> kind of blends into my hair, but yeah, it's just so cute. It has the little bear ears. I mean, it's basically like a basic ribbed beanie. I say that, I forget about, <laughs> I literally almost cried while making this. Not from, ugh, just from frustration. I have never done. So let me just say, this is, so I will unroll it. So there's a ton of beanie patterns out there. That I know you do like provisional cast on and you start knitting one way and then you flip it, you knit the other. There's a lot of them out there. I've never done them. I've only done like a basic, a basic beanie where you like do ribbing and then stock in it or just ribbing and then you just flip it up once and that's your brim. So this one was a provisional cast on. I'd never done this construction before. I'd never done provisional cast on. <sighs> so, <laughs> um, well the provisional cast on, I did it and I was like, wow, this isn't, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You got a little crochet hook and you just, you know, you crochet some chains. But I think my issue was I did not read ahead of the pattern. I just saw like professional cast on and I was like, okay, I'll do that. And so I had to look it up obviously on YouTube and all the YouTube people used a different color string. And so I was like, okay, this makes sense. This makes sense. Cause I'll like rip it out later, right? Correct. I'll rip it out later and you'll have live stitches. I don't think, <laughs> you kept it in this pattern. You kept the provisional cast on and I did not read ahead. And so I used a different color string just to like differentiate and make it easier on myself. And like while I was knitting this part, which I guess technically it was this part, I think. While I was knitting this part, um, I was thinking to myself, I was doing ribbing, I was like, am I actually taking <laughs> this like white string out? Cause I had just a white string. It's like, am I taking this out? And I just could not visualize how I could not visualize how it would be flipped up. I couldn't visualize how it was constructed. I was just literally doing it on the fly. Like I didn't realize, cause it's double folded brim. In my mind, I was like double folded. That just means like fold over once. But I mean, technically this is like three layers once you do it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> this is why my brain was just so fried and confused. So I'm trying to think of what I did. So I had the white string or whatever, and I was like, this could potentially be an issue because I realized it's like, oh wait, it's like the provisional cast on, it doesn't come off. You know, it stays. You, you're supposed to like knit into the provisional cast on to make this like double fabric. <laughs> and so in my head, I was like, wait a second, you're gonna be able to see it. You're gonna see just a random white string. It's like, no, no, we're not doing that. So I literally, I took out the provisional cast on, but for some reason it's supposed to be super easy. You literally just like rip out the 
you like cut it, rip it out, and it just goes boop, 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 and like all the live stitches are there. I guess while I did the provisional cast on, I accidentally split the yarn, so there was like one little strand of yarn that was way behind the others, and like I couldn't, it just did not come out seamlessly, so I literally had to do a few of them at a time. I was dropping stitches left, right, they were flying off. So dramatic. <laughs> Anyways, I just had the hardest time getting that provisional cast off. Provisional cast on off, getting my live stitches, because I mean, af even after I did the provisional, even after I got that stupid string out, my stitches were just everywhere, I mean. It was a mess. This was- I did this before work in the morning and I was so stressed out it like set my day off. I don't know why I decided to do a big step like that in the morning or like fix a mistake. So anyways, I did. I got it. What I decided to do um, was just like take the live stitches off and then knit to the live stitches. So it worked out fine. It was just a lot because I had to, you know, pick up stitches I lost. Big headache, almost cried, it was my fault. And then I realized you flip it up, so I don't even think you would be able to see that white string if I would have left it in. <laughs> Anyways, that was my my fault, my issue. I just need to read ahead and you know, practice things. I'm someone who likes to just do it. I don't like to read instructions. I just wanna like do it. So yeah, my patience tested me. <laughs> but you know what, it looks fine. I got it done. I'll show you again, cause it's so cute. But yeah, I used Barocco vintage i think it's like a acrylic worsted combo i have a lot of this left over from last year i knit a sweater out of it that i'm actually gonna rip out it's in a different color but i really like the feel of it and so i got this brown color to make i was really into cabled beanies last year i was making people beanies for christmas and so this was something i didn't use i didn't end up using so i have a lot left over but so yeah i think it'll be good because it's wool but it's also acrylic so it's Super wash if any, you know, spit up or anything <laughs> happens to get on this. But yeah, it's super cute. I think I made it, I want to say there's like a zero size and then a newborn size and then a three to six month size. Could be wrong, but I think I made like the second size. So it wasn't like teeny tiny newborn. You know, I think she has preemie sizes too. There's like, she has a lot of sizes for this and it goes up pretty far. I'm not going to say how far it goes because I can't remember, but it goes up to like you know, past toddler. So if you got a little kid in your life and you want to make them into a cub, <laughs> here you go. Highly, highly recommend. It was so fun. My fault for the, <laughs> my huge provisional cast on headache. I think if I was doing it again, I would just do it the same way. Or I could just knit in. Cause I've folded a lot of neck bands where I just cast on regularly, you know, uh, knit the double amount of length, fold it over and then knit into the cast on. I think I would just do that to save myself a headache because provisional cast on might not be for me. <laughs> At least, I don't know, I just, my brain is too, too scrambled for that. Um, so yeah, that was a very fun knit, very fast. I think I knit it in two days. Like I cast it on Monday, this past Monday, and it's currently Sunday when I'm filming this. And I got it done Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. It was so fast, so quick. And I was, I've never done like tiny things like this before, but it was not that bad. It was just short rows and then you stuff it with extra yarn and you just like, you know, seam it in. So yeah, fun, fun project. It looks really, really cute, I think. Okay, taking a breath. <laughs> I got all worked up over my provisional cast on. Um, oh, okay, I also finished this one. So if you watched my knitting vlog, <laughs> This is my Penelope kerchief. I love this little baby. This is for me. This is a me knit, not a baby knit. Um, but it's just, it goes in your hair. It's like a headscarf. So I did make it, I look like a peasant. <laughs> I did make it um, a little bit bigger on accident, but I think it works for me because my hair, as you can see, it's very poofy. I live in the most humid part of Texas, I swear and it just makes, it enhances my poofiness, my frizz. So this helps me keep my hair back. But yeah, I would say I'm gonna wear this so much. I really wanna make a white one um, because it was just, number one, it was so fast. I knit it within a week. It uses, um, I guess you could use anything, but it's cotton, uh, DK is what it calls for. I don't even know if it's cotton specifically, but I use cotton. So this is Ultra Pima DK Cascade. I said that in all the wrong order. <laughs> Cascades Ultra Pima 
DK cotton yarn. Um, so I had some of this in stash because it's a good stash buster. And I just knit this baby up. I mean, it's pretty simple too. Oh, and this is a free pattern. Let me tell you by who. Um, Linnea Nyman, I believe. And I think she has like a promotion right now that I did not know about whenever I knit this. It's if you knit this free pattern, if you share it maybe, she'll give you a code for one of like a free pattern of hers for Ravelry. So that was so nice of her. I got a little a code for a free something. I don't know. I don't, I, dear God, I cannot talk. I'm so scrambled. I have not picked out a pattern yet, but I will soon. She has a lot of cute little children stuff too. So yeah, this was so fun. It's just a triangle and I never knit a triangle before. I've never knit a shawl before. Um, I'm not a shawl person at this point in my life. I could become one, but so yeah, it was just a triangle and then it has this really fun lace work pattern on the front, which is so fun once you get going. And then it has eye cords. Whoops. Eye cords. And uh, attaching the eye cords were really fun. I, also, I could not visualize this in the pattern. I have a really hard time visualizing instructions until I just get going. But so you like knit an eye cord and then you bind it on to this. I don't know if it's an eye cord bind off or some sort of variation. And then you just, you end up here and then you just keep going with this. So it's like one seamless, I don't know, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun to watch it come together. So yeah, it has a nice little garter edge, but it's a super easy project. It's free, it's a stash buster. I bet you have something in your stash that you could use for this. What I was saying is I wanna make a white one because I would go with everything and I wear headscarves all the time. Or kerchiefs. Is that how you say that word? I think of it like handkerchief and just take off the hank. So kerchief, but I could, I could not be pronouncing that right. I don't know. So yeah, I love this little guy. She's my favorite. I don't know how else to show you. <laughs> But yeah, maybe I can zoom in on the lace work. It was so fun. Very fun project. Very fast project. Speedy. I did it within a week of just like straight up chilling knitting. So fun, fun. Those are all of my FOs. Um, I feel like I had a lot, at least for having none, you know, for a while, for months. <laughs> and I just whipped those out. So that was a good time. All small, and I honestly don't make a ton of accessories, at least for myself. So it was fun to knit like socks, a pair of socks, two, and a little hat, and a kerchief. Because I honestly, um, I mean, I don't know how much wear our little baby's gonna get out of all this stuff. He might grow out of it really fast. But I'll definitely wear the little headscarf thing all the time. So fun, fun break from like big projects. Speaking of big projects, let's get into my whips. I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, this one I've been working on for a while. So, you might have seen this. This is the halibut sweater, which was on hold for a long time as I was sick um, in the first five months <laughs> of pregnancy, but we're not talking about that anymore. Um, so, it was, I had just finished the color work. I think I started on this in December, maybe. Maybe January. But the color work took me a few months. It took me until March. I finished it in March, I'm pretty sure. It was just a lot. It was a lot of color work. I like color work, but once I get going, like halfway in, I don't like it anymore. It's like I just need a little bit to keep me um, engaged. And then afterwards, I'm like, okay, I, too much. It's almost, it's like whenever you eat ice cream, like too much ice cream is too much. But like just enough, that's good. <laughs> Right? Although I don't know if you could ever eat enough ice cream. I couldn't. I want ice cream now. Anyways. So I got a lot done. So last time I showed you, I had just split for the sleeves. That's where I left off. That's all I had to do was split for the sleeves and then just like go straight stockinette for the body. And it was just held for months. <laughs> I mean months. This was supposed to be a Christmas, a Christmas gift last year? We we're more than halfway through this year. Anyways, this is from my husband. Um, Halibut Sweater by Caitlin Hunter. Not sure if I just blew through that. So yeah, last time it was just the color work. And it's so crazy because I swear I've been knitting on this for forever. Like the past two, three weeks. And it doesn't seem like that much progress. But it is. I'm almost done with the body. And I'm, well, 
done with the stock knit and I'll move on to the ribbing which I think will take me longer <laughs> than the stock knit did but um so yeah this is it's honestly been enjoyable though I've really been enjoying just like straight stock and net knitting especially before work I feel like this is a great morning project I usually knit like an hour and a half before work because I work from home so I have the luxury of staying home so I get up like seven make breakfast coffee and just knit and watch, you know, YouTube for a while. Okay, I'm sorry, my husband walked in as I was talking about his sweater. Um, so yeah, what I was saying is it's really, it's been really fun for me just to like have straight stock and net and not think for a while. I've been doing this before work and it's been so nice. I've, <laughs> after I, the provisional cast on situation before work and it just like set my whole little day up for, I don't know, my brain was just in shambles. <laughs> um, so I've decided, never casting on anything before work ever again. I'm just, I'm just gonna knit, you know, straight stockinette before work. If I have something like that that I'm working on. I do. This is my husband's sweater. <laughs> so yeah, originally a Christmas present, then it turned into like a Valentine's Day present, then it turned in to just whenever the heck I get it done. But his birthday is at the end of August, so I'm like pretty dang certain I can get this done. I feel like the body just takes forever. I feel like I'm on body island more than sleeve island. But yeah, I'm confident with <laughs> by next by the end of next month, this will be done. And I mean, not not that he can enjoy it. It's 110 degrees outside or something like that. So yeah, <laughs> we we're talking. We we're like, we're gonna have to like travel for you to wear this sweater. But you know what? It'll be okay. He'll wear it on all of our travels. So yeah, this is a fun one. Fun guy. <laughs> I really do love the color work though, like the way it looks. I'm sure it'll look even cooler with blocking, but I don't know. Color work's so much fun after you do it. <laughs> not at the beginning, but like, I don't know. I'm not a huge, huge color work person. I can only have like one color work project at a time. So yeah, oh, and I used very rustic wool. Um, lore? That's all I'm remembering about this. I don't know if that's the brand, I don't know if that's the type. <laughs> Just know it's called lore and it's very rustic it it's not as bad or not that it's bad but like it's not as rustic as um let lopey for sure that was a contender my husband really wants rustic wool and i like had him go to yarn stores and he helped me feel of all the wools just because i didn't want to knit him something that he would never wear because like why would i do that <laughs> so he swore he would wear this he really liked it he's a forester so especially when we lived in washington he was out in the woods a lot it was rainy all the time so cold during certain months and so now he's in the woods here in texas and it's freaking hot so yeah i don't know when he's gonna wear this maybe we'll like drive to colorado or washington again maybe we'll take our little baby on some road trips or something but so yeah he'll have this in time for winter <laughs> which it could be like 80 degrees in texas rain not rain dance winter dance i'll be doing a winter dance so yeah, I've gotten pretty far. I'm proud of myself. It's it's just like really fun to have a straight stock in it. And in fact, <laughs> I've enjoyed this so much. I think I think I've decided I want like one stock in it or not stock in it, but just like one big long sweater project on my needles at all times, no matter what time of year it is. And I've been looking at one pattern, <laughs> but I'm telling myself I cannot cast it on until I finish this bad boy, which will be like a month or so. But it's by Sarah. Oh, I can't say her last name. Nori. I'll put it over here, and I truly do not remember the name of the pattern. I'll also put that up here. But it's so pretty. It's like this lacework yolk. I've always wanted to do a lacework sweater, and I've never had before. And it seems so much less daunting than color work. I'm gonna take a big break from color work after this. Because before this, I made the Lum Lummy? Lum? Pullover, also by Sarah. Insert last name. Um... And I love that guy. I wear that one all the time. I even got to wear that one in Texas whenever we moved back because it was so cold for a few days. <laughs> days. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely already planning on casting on that one for the fall. I'm thinking I might rip up my sweater that I made, the Barocco Vintage. I made in Barocco Vintage, which that one's worse. It's probably not. I think the pattern is DK. Might have to go find some more DK yarn, but... Yeah, I really want to make one like orangey color, Carhartt orange or something like that. That'd be so nice. So yeah, I think after I get finished with this guy, 
that'll be my next big big project and that's what's motivating me which is so selfish because <laughs> what should be motivating me is like the happiness of my husband you know getting this i don't know what's wrong with me anyways <laughs> So yeah, it's my halibut sweater. Lots, I mean, some good progress. It feels like I've made more progress than it looks like. But I think I just have like an inch more of body stock in it and then I'll get on to like three inches of ribbing, which will take forever, but that's okay. Okay, ooh, this next one. <laughs> so this is one I've been casting on. I casted these on yesterday and lo and behold, I casted on some socks. <laughs> Um, I have talked about this in my previous videos, um, I think every single video I've talked about my love-hate relationship with socks. It's not hate, it's just I get bored, I think, after knitting one sock and then I just don't want to move on to the next one or I forget about it. So I have a few single socks just lying around my house, like, patiently waiting on the other half, which is so sad. <laughs> but, you know, I decided to cast on new ones. I didn't decide to finish an old one. I was like, no, I need to cast on new socks. But... These are summer socks. They're shorties, so I think that will inspire me to get them done because they're faster. It's practical because it's summer, they're short. Anyways, so these are called Summer Flowers by This Handmade Life. Now, um, I have been looking at This Handmade Life's sock patterns forever. I actually saved a few. They're in my library. I think she has some that are free on her Ravelry page. But so I've been looking at them forever because they all, a lot of them have this really pretty just like lace motif down the front. So nice, so pretty, so whimsical. And so I was just looking at all of her patterns and they're pretty, um, they're not like super, super expensive, but I think I realized why. They're, a lot of them are $3. I think this one was $3 to begin with, but um, she had like a birthday sale going on. So I snatched up, uh, I don't know if this is the only one I bought. I might have bought another pattern. Oh, but they ended up being like two bucks and I was like yeah I can I can validate that I've worked hard this week yeah I can spend two bucks on pattern but so yeah and um, I'm I think what's really making me excited is the lace work partially and the color of this yarn I don't know if you can tell look how pretty there's a story to this I'll show you I've only done which I feel like I've done a lot yesterday I did the cuff I think I casted these on yesterday morning Maybe Friday? I don't know. Um, I had to hand wind the yarn, which took me a while. <laughs> I need to get a swift. Is that what those things are called? I don't know. So yeah, the yarn's making me really excited, and the lace work motif is making me really excited, because I just got done with my lace work handkerchief, handkerchief, kerchief for my hair, and so I was just like on a lace kick, because it's just so fun. I mean, and I think it's so simple, it looks intricate, but once you look at the directions, I mean, they lay it off there right for you. There's a whole chart you read and it's just like different techniques and then all together it looks so nice, but it's honestly so simple to do. So anyways, this yarn was an acquisition as well. <laughs> so um, I guess I'll talk about the origin of it later, but I got this from a tea stash, which I was so soaked about. It's, I can't say this word, Sorella, I think, like Cinderella, but sewing, Sorella yarn maybe i've always wanted silver really yarn i follow her on instagram and she just has all these really cute colorways and tonals and variegated yarns and ugh, i'm a sucker for tonals for sure they're just so pretty i like all the different you know colors but they're not super like crazy so i think they're good for like anything because sometimes i think variegated yarns like super crazy variegated yarns especially in lace don't show up as good because like the lace is supposed to be prevalent too. I don't know if that makes any sense, but so yeah, I'm was so excited to find this, and it was um, let me look. Let's make sure I get this right. Oh yeah, it was simply Sarah Knits on Instagram. She did a stash bust, stash bust. She did a stash. She just sold some of her stash. <laughs> So I got uh, three scans, and so this is one of them. I'll talk about the rest later, but I was, I don't know what got into me, because I literally just talked so hard about like sock patterns and all my single socks, and I don't know, maybe it's because I finished those other two socks, the little tiny socks, so I was like, oh yeah, I can make some for me, but it's honestly going so good. Um, I turned, I did the heel, I finished the heel this morning. 
I turned it, I am on the gusset, decreases, so it's so much fun. It's just, it's honestly like a plain simple sock except for the lace work pattern on the front. And so I think that's why I was going to say. So the pattern isn't that, um, it's not that pricey, but I think I know why <laughs> after buying it. I think I would not recommend this pattern. I don't know how the other ones are, but this one specifically, I would not recommend it for anyone who has not made a sock before. Like if you're new to socks and you have no idea about the construction or anything, if you haven't done it at least one time, um, I would look toward... Oh, there's one person who... Summer Lee, I think. Summer Lee Knits, she has like a basic sock pattern that's free and she like goes into all the techniques and stuff. I would recommend that one first. But if you know how to like create, if you know all the steps of creating a sock, then yes, you could totally do this one. Because guess what? I'm doing this one. <laughs> and um, so yeah, because it's just, it's more of a pattern that's kind of, I think, assumes you know what to do. Or like assumes you know what a gusset is or assumes you know what, um, I don't know. Just like, it would be helpful to have some basic sock knowledge if you're doing this pattern. I don't know about her other patterns. They could be more in depth. But they're definitely for like sock knitters for sure but if you have done socks before i highly recommend and if not you could totally do it i would just i would just look toward like summerly knits first just to at least get a gist of like what's happening and what's going on and why you're doing certain things because it's always nice to know why you're doing things <laughs> but yeah i just think these are so pretty and i wonder if you can see it i don't know if you can i'll kind of show it like this i'll do it all the way I don't know if that's helping anything. That just strains me. But so yeah, you can't really tell. I have done a few lace work. Um, I've completed the lace work chart once, so. Still got a long way to go, but it's a little shorty. So it's practical. It's summer. Ooh, I will say. So this is Sorella's so so sock yarn. It's classic sock. Um, it is 100% merino superwash wool, and I've never knit a sock without nylon before. But that being said, I've also never worn one of my socks with nylon before. So I've heard people debate. I know there's people out there who only really like rice, who only really like wool for socks and no nylon. There's people out there who will only knit socks with like some amount of nylon. Usually sock yarns are like 75, some type of wool, 25% nylon, and you can wash it in, you know, the washing machine because it's a sock. So you, this one is super wash merino and it feels so nice, so soft, so lovely, prettiest color ever. It's like this really pretty peachy pink. I don't know if you can tell. I'm really trying to show you. It's just so pretty. It's perfect for summer. Um, so yeah, what I was saying is I've never knit a non-nylon sock before, so I'm not sure how this is going to hold up. But honestly, I think this is more like a Birkenstock and socks kind of thing. I would never wear these in boots, especially since it's shorty and there's like delicate lace work on the top. I think these are more, not even house. I don't know. I just think I'll wear them with broken socks and like show them off. Another thing I'm very nervous about. <laughs> we have two dogs. Um, we have a black lab. He's so sweet, but he sheds like crazy in our entire house, no matter how much I vacuum, no matter how many times I swiffer or mop, anywhere you step, you will step on some amount of dog hair. Like, it's just, it's constant. Literally no, there's no cure for it. <laughs> so our socks, just like our regular socks, get a ton of dog hair in them, even after we wash them. So I just really hope, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I know I could literally like sit there and pick it out, but I hope these don't get super dirty and like super, I don't know. <laughs> It'll become like fiber and dog hair. <laughs> I don't know. That's also why I'm really nervous about just making socks in general. But we'll see. I'm excited. I'm confident, honestly. I could get this definitely the first one done. I think I'm gonna knit on this one today. I have all day to knit. We're having a chill, chill day today. So I really think I could get this one done. Um, maybe not today, but I can get it done this week probably. And then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just cast on the next one. That's what I wanna do. <laughs> to not, you know, to not have one sad sock alone. Someone actually told me in one of my other videos, they were like, oh yeah, well you should cast on both at the same time, like not with magic loop. I know people do that. I hate magic loop personally. Like, 
I don't know, maybe I should try it. I just, not for me. Um, so they were like, maybe you should use two needles and like, you know, cast on two socks separately and then do like the cuff and then do the cuff on the other one. So you're like constantly working on two. And yes, I would do that. But I had to hand wind this baby. So the bottom of like the other end of the yarn is literally deep, deep, deep in here. <laughs> I, I swear, I'm gonna get a Swift soon and the yarn winder because it just, this is the first time I've had to wind a ball in quite a while. Cause I used to get all my yarn from my local yarn store in Washington cause I had so much and um, like they would just wind it for me. <laughs> but I've been ordering more yarn recently online just because um, I really do like my local yarn store here but sometimes they don't have as much like of the specific type of yarn I'm looking for. So I've been getting lots of just hanks and I've been having to hand wind them and it's, it's a little exhausting. <laughs> Maybe it's cause I'm pregnant. <laughs> but. It's a workout sometimes, especially fingering weight sock yarn. It's a lot of yards to wind up. Anyways, so yeah, I'm excited about this. And I think I'll, I'm not sure if I'll have enough left over afterwards because they're shorties to make another pair of shorties, but I will definitely use them for like contrast heels and cuffs and stuff like that. I'm just, I really like this color. And I think it's perfect for the pattern name too because it's like summer flowers and I love flowers, I love wildflowers. And this just reminds me of like fun little flowers, the color does, so yeah. I think it'll be great. Anyways, rambling about a sock. <laughs> then hopefully I'll finish. This is me, this is my energy when I start socks, for sure. With every sock I start. I'm back, I had to take a quick potty break. Um, so yeah, those are my socks. Very, very excited for those. Um, so yeah, let's get into our last whip, which was um, <laughs> so random, so random. So if you've watched my other, you know, videos, um, I've been really rambling about like the golden oak tea and how I bought this really pretty yellow silk yarn to make a some summer thing. I don't know if I had the golden oak in mind when I bought this or not, but I've just been rambling. I'm like, I'm gonna use this for that. I'm gonna use this for that. Did I? No. <laughs> but did I cast on something with it? Yes, I did. Um, and it's not anything I've talked about, so I don't know why. <laughs> oh, this is very tangled. And it's, I'm gonna cast this on this past week, but I worked on it for like maybe 30 minutes and stopped. I don't know if that's gonna be telling about how long it's gonna take me or if I'm even gonna finish it. I don't know. Sometimes, I think after knitting the halibut sweater, I, at the end of the day, I'm like, I just, I need something more like, even though I really enjoy stocking it, really enjoy it. I'm also like, I just wanna be more like, you know, um, I don't know, engaged maybe with something different, like doing something different. So I randomly cast it on, not randomly. I was watching Hannah Graham's podcast and she was wearing this top and I was like, wow. And I, <laughs> I've seen this top on Instagram a lot and it wasn't my favorite. I don't know why whenever I saw it on Instagram. I think it because it, it kind of looks like crochet and I have nothing against crochet. Crochet is really cool. But I don't know, I was like, if I'm gonna knit something, I want it to look knitted, you know? And any, I'll show you. But after I saw it on Hannah, I was like, wow, that's really pretty actually. And I need to make that at this second. So literally cast it on that day <laughs> with uh, my yarn that does not, I didn't gauge. Do I ever gauge? No, unless it's a test knit. And this is DK yarn, it calls for fingering, but I kind of compared it because I have some uh, knitting for olive merino and cotton merino. So I compared it to that and it, it looks about the same size. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, this will work. Didn't even gauge. Just kind of like chose a random size because I'm pregnant and I, <laughs> I don't really know what's gonna fit me. Uh, everything's growing, <laughs> not at a very rapid pace, honestly, but everything will grow and everything's growing and I just don't know my size anymore. So I picked a random size based on what I thought. And so <laughs> let me just show you. This is camisole number four <laughs> by my favorite things in knitwear. And it is literally, where is, I don't know if this is even the right side or the wrong side. I mean, there's barely anything to show. Oops, let's see if you can see it at all. So this is my humble beginnings. Um, so you knit this one, you knit four separate triangles and then you, uh, it comes together in one circle. <laughs> afterward um so yes <laughs> i 
I was just perplexed. I had to knit this. I saw it on her hand and I was like, wow, that is my summer top right there. She was wearing, I think it was, I don't know if it was yellow or if it was orange. But I was like, my yellow, you know, silk would be so good for that. And I was thinking about, I talked about maybe casting on camisole number two or number one, whichever one is just like the basic ribbed one because I really like that one. But I also don't want things to hug me right now. I just, I like, you know, t-shirts. So I'm making this one, I think I might be making it in a small size, but I'm using DK yarn and I'm confident this will get bigger whenever I block it. So I think I'm just gonna make it a tiny bit cropped so I can like put it in like my high-waisted stretchy pants or stretchy skirts or whatever. So yeah, <laughs> this is my random cast on, like extremely random. Um, I am surprised I only did on it this much. I mean, I'm, I seriously did on it for like 30 minutes and I was like, wow, my brain's tired. So I don't know if, if I'm just getting like mushy brain, mushy pregnancy brain or something, but I went straight back to my halibut. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. And I haven't got the urge to knit on it again. <laughs> so I don't know if this is going to take me a while. I think it, I think I would be faster to do it if it started at the bottom and I knitted it in the round. I think I just really want to knit in the round and just get going because I think once, um, you know, you get the pattern down, the knit pattern, I think I could just easily do it. But I think because I'm having to knit all four of the, you know, chest pieces separately, I think that's slowing me down just because I don't love knitting flat, honestly. And it just feels like a lot, like when I think about four separate pieces I'm like wow that's a lot of pieces even though if I did it the other way I would still get the same products in the same amount of time so I don't know my brain has a hard time right now thinking about things but we'll see honestly I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep it and keep going or if I'm gonna just take it off since I didn't do that much anyways I've had quite the dilemma with summer projects for myself I've really been wanting to knit another tank top, just like one more for the summer, because I only knit my outline tank and that's it. And so I was like, yeah, I really want to knit like one more. And so I talked about the golden oak tank, and I don't know why, sometimes I just talk about stuff and then my eye will catch something different, and I'm like, oh, I need to have that instead. And so <laughs> before I cast it on this, I was seriously considering the June top by Petite Knit. And I actually bought that pattern too. <laughs> and then I saw this one, I was like, oh no, I need that one instead. I don't know. So that one I know is just like straight so I'm gonna super simple, looks good, scoop neck. I think that's what you call it. It just looks very nice and simple. I'm sure I can knit it with positive ease so it's like I could tuck it into jeans. So I don't know if I'm gonna go ahead with a project like this since I already am, I cast it on socks with a lace, you know, motif. To like keep my brain engaged and that's in the round <laughs> so it's just i don't know why it just it feels easier it doesn't feel as daunting but um but i didn't really like this and i think this would be a really cool piece to have and it's different than anything else i've ever made so i don't know if i'm gonna keep it or if i'm gonna rip it up and do the june top before this i also had another dilemma <laughs> last week i think sunday last week no maybe friday I got this strange cast on fever to cast on something and so I've been looking at I actually had this in my library before I got pregnant it was the disco flutter top by Yvette just Yvette I don't remember her whole thing or whole, her whole like handle but it's this really cute top which I still love and it, it has this um almost square neck but like sweethearts I'm really obsessed with the sweetheart neck shaping recently and I feel like I've seen it in a lot of different places but it's this really simple tee with that sweetheart like bunched up ruched almost like right at the boob center <laughs> and then it it's kind of it opens up right here and it's like a flutter top and I really love that and I had full intentions of knitting that and I bought yarn to knit that with my knitting for olive merino that's just I think it's in powder so it's kind of like this pinky neutral cream color almost so we had that and it's like Carson just go ahead and cast it on and I was like wait <laughs> you're pregnant and like I don't know I didn't know if I wanted because the thing I wanted most was like the little sweetheart ruche situation going on and I really did like the cap sleeves too it was just such like a pretty 
neck silhouette. And I didn't know about the flutter because I was like, if I'm getting like a bigger, you know, stomach <laughs> in the coming months and stuff, I don't know if I want that shape on me. I don't know how I'd feel about it. And I wanted the stuff that I'll wear now and later. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to hack this baby. <laughs> I've literally never hacked before. And so I decided that I would just, because the way it's done, it's like knit up from here to here. And then it's, you pick up at the bottom and knit the bottom. So, and that's also a really nice detail too, because you can tell it kind of like, it's different from here. And I was like, you know what, we're not going to do that. We're just going to go straight. So it's like a t-shirt. We're just going to go straight. And then you're going to have the little ruche thing and then the construction. So I casted it on and I went hard for like two days. All last week is what I knit it on. And then I was just like, I don't know about this, Carson. <laughs> I don't know. And I actually, I filmed my podcast Sunday, last Sunday. And I... It was, if you haven't watched it, it was all my summer stuff I did last year and how I like literally don't wear any of it. <laughs> well, not any of it. I wear some pieces, but like a lot of pieces I made, I was just in this crazy cast on mode and I just knit it to knit it and then I never actually wore it. So I thought about it Sunday night and I was like, you know what, Carson? You literally just talked about how a lot of your pieces have been impractical and like how you want to be more intentional. So I just ripped it up and I was like, I don't even feel bad about this. I don't feel bad. We're just gonna like undo it. We'll save this pattern for after, <laughs> after baby. And I don't know, it'll still be good then, you know? So ripped that up and I casted this on. So I don't know if it's gonna be another rip up. I don't know, but you know what? If I do rip it up, it's okay. It's okay because this is for me and I want it to be something that I'll actually wear. And I also have time, like, it's gonna be hot in Texas until forever. <laughs> so it's not like I'm on a deadline or anything. And I really like this color too. Anyways, this is just me rambling, trying to decide if I'm gonna leave this or not, or keep going. Who knows, I could get very inspired one day and just like go forever and have all four done in the knit in the round and be good to go. I don't know, so we're gonna see about that. Anyways, <laughs> that's all my whips. Lots of indecisiveness. Lots of random cast-ons, but I'm confident like what I went with is practical. It's practical. My socks are practical and this could be practical or I can make it into something different. I don't know. So, oh, all my whips, um, acquisitions, all my acquisitions. Okay. So I already talked about the golden peach. I think I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I have the label. Yeah, it's golden peach. It's a summer tonal and I got that from a D stash. Sorella, pretty sure that's how you say it. So yes, I got another skein of Sorella. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Okay, so same situation. D stash um, from Simply <sighs> Simply Sarah Knits. Thank you, Sarah, for letting me grab all of your yarn that you did not want. Cause literally, you had some gems. Um, cause I've always wanted Sorella yarn. So yeah, I saw this. Um, and I loved it. I love the color which is surprising. I actually have a tiny, a tiny like mini skein, not of Sorella, but of a different type of yarn. It looks a lot like this color. And I used it for my poppy socks, which are currently on hold. <laughs> Still haven't decided what I'm gonna do with those yet. Uh, <laughs> we don't have to think about that now. Um, so yeah, I got this. I just, I love, I love sock yarn, not because I use it all the time, <laughs> but because I like the, one skein you can make a lot out of it and you can get like separate colors without having to commit to buying like six skeins of one color and spending all your money on one color when you can get like different skeins of you know all these other different colors and make a lot of good stuff with it so this was selfish buy because i got this and this was also in her d stash i'm not entirely sure what um uh, brand this is or what the name is i don't think it's Sor sorella i can't remember but it I do know it's sock yarn, so it's 75 uh, merino, 70, 25 acrylic, not acrylic, nylon. So um, yeah, more like traditional sock yarn. It feels so nice though, so nice and squishy. It's like this reddish pink color. I don't know if you can see that. Is it gonna focus, maybe? Anyways, it's this like reddish pink color. Love the color. But I saw both of these in her D stash and I was like, I need those because I really wanna make what is her name? Stone Knits, maybe? Her little mushroom socks? 
I've been adding those forever and I know I have a weird thing about color work and socks and only finishing one sock so <laughs> this is what I originally got these for it's like that would be perfect like the green and the red ish color but after thinking I was like you know what this would make a really good baby knit because it's 100% super wash merino wool it is plenty to make something I've been eyeing lots of rompers and lots of like things that button at the bottom There's so many cute things and um, Sarah actually recommended that I knit the anchor suit. I think that's what it's called about petite knit. And I have been looking at that one too before she even said that. So I was like, wow, is that a sign? But I also love this one. I do not remember the name. I'll put it somewhere. It has, it's a romper. It looks like a straight up sweater and it buttons at the bottom, uh, like in between the legs. And then it has this really sweet uh, lace leaf pattern all down the front. But after further investigation, I was like totally committed to that one. I almost bought it. I was ready to like buy yarn for it before I got this yarn. And I looked at it, I always look at the projects on Ravelry, like I deep dive. And um, after, <laughs> after a deep dive, I found out that, so it's, the original pattern is in a different language. Um, I'm sure she speaks, that's like her mother tongue. <laughs> and it is translated to English. But apparently the English version either has mistakes in it or it's really hard to read. Like it's not translated very well. So I was like, I don't know if I wanna, my brain's already mush like for being pregnant. So I don't know if I can handle a hard to read pattern. I don't even know if I wanna pay for like a hard to read pattern. So I don't know, that one might be out. But I also found one that's free. That's just the romper sweater. And I was like, if I can figure out the lace work pattern um, I could just knit like a lace pattern on the front, you know, just like I'm doing with my socks. Um, and I actually found that leaf, the same ish leaf lace work pattern in a book. And I didn't buy the book, but I almost did. And I think I might go back and get it. It's just, I, was, I'm sh I think it's a very popular book. It's like the art of Japanese lace work or something like that. And it has like all these lace patterns in it. And I know a lot of designers use like reference that book for their lace work. Um, patterns and designs so I don't know I think this would look so nice though with little leaves running down it's just such a nice color um ooh, I also have another one that I literally might cast on today but I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this or if I'm gonna use if I'm just gonna cave and use my knitting for all of cotton merino even though it's not super wash I was looking I did another deep dive because like people use this for babies all the time like how do they do it and I've seen where you can wash it in the, I don't know, I just looked up merino wool, not like specifically knitting for olive. And some people do wash it on cold and they just don't dry it, like very gentle wash. So I don't know. But it's just the prettiest like Carhartt orange color. And I really want to make, I think it's called the Henley suit the Henley pullover or something but it's like a Henley romper that's ribbed it's the cutest thing ever and it's short sleeve so I think it'd be very 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 practical and I really want to knit it in like the very smallest tiniest newborn size because I think it'd be a really cute like take home outfit to put him in <laughs> I don't know so I might use this for that or I could use my knitting for olive because I have a ton of it and it's so cute and it's cotton merino so nice and breathable I don't know, I have lots of things to decide on, but for now, I'm just gonna keep knitting on all my knits, all my knits. Okay, I have one more acquisition um, that you might have seen if you watched my knitting vlog. I opened this then, but it is so pretty, and it is Midsummer Sock by Savannah Rose Handmade, and it is in her Midsummer collection. I pre-ordered it and everything. That's the first time I ever did that. I've bought from Indie Dyers before, but I've never done like a pre-order, you know, situation. It was so fun, because I was like, ooh, I'm getting this really cool skein but it's so pretty i wish it would focus come on it's just the prettiest prettiest yarn ever i don't know what i'm gonna make with this i think i just want to make some basic socks like maybe basic rib socks because like i was saying earlier i feel like sometimes lace work takes away from the irrigated yarn like this because i want the colors to be the main focus you know so i might just knit some basic rib socks with it if i was having a girl i would totally knit her something in this but our little boy probably won't hit him. 
anything in this, but I think it's it's okay because I can be selfish with this. It's literally all my favorite colors in one hank of yarn. It's amazing. So yeah, I have quite, as you can see, I have quite a lot of yarn to um, knit up or to hand wind, so I'm like very determined to buy a Swift and a yarn winder very soon because I just can't, I can't do it with all this yarn. <laughs> can't do it. So yeah, that is all of my knitting. I feel like I was kind of a, on a, just wired up today. I, I hope I talk slow enough. I don't know why I had so much to say <laughs> about all my stuff, but yeah, I think that's it. So thanks for sticking around. Oh, and I also want to just say thank you for being so supportive. Everyone who's been so nice and so kind. Y'all are so, it's just such sweet people. The knitting community is so nice. Um, and it's, I've always thought it was really nice, but especially after putting out my podcast, I've gotten so many sweet comments and subscribers and it's just been so fun like getting to meet y'all virtually and talking to you through comments and stuff i mean someone from ireland watched one of my podcasts which i thought was insane and someone from new zealand commented and i was like whoa like howdy <laughs> howdy from texas sorry short intermission while my camera card was full but i'm back and i just wanted to wrap it up and say thank you for everyone who's been so sweet with all your comments and it's just been really fun like seeing you all i don't know hopefully enjoy <laughs> my rambles. I'm glad someone does. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thanks for sticking around and hope to see you next time.